record that and we're going to talk about that and then I'm going to have like a little mini quiz um, that you can work on this week. It's just going to probably be, you know, a couple questions just about what we're watching. So you may want to try to just take note on this. Um, let's see, where am I? Where am I? I just lost. Where am I? All right. So this is, um, So I just felt like this is really important to review this and look at it again. Uh, it's the 12 most used cuts and transitions. And so I figured we're going to talk about that and review that today. And that probably should take us to the end of class today. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to stop sharing screen. Okay. Are you seeing YouTube right now? Mm -hmm. All right. Parker to learn more about Corey Block's video. But let's now jump into our cuts and transitions. Cut number one is the clean cut or hard cut or just a basic cut. This is when you do a simple cut between one clip to another. Nothing fancy, no crossfades, no tricks, just a good old fashioned cut. And a lot of the other cuts and transitions we'll be talking about today are just variations or elaborations of the clean cut. You'll see clean cuts used most often in narrative style films as the camera cuts from a wide shot to a medium shot or to a tight shot or back and forth between two over the shoulder dialogue shots. In these types of situations, trying to introduce some kind of fancy cut in a narrative scene will often just distract the viewer from the story and feel unnecessary and out of place. And one thing to keep in mind with any clean cut is to use the 30 degree rule, which states that when you do make a clean cut, you usually want the second clip to have been shot from an angle of at least 30 degrees away from the first clip. You don't use a different angle when cutting. You usually at least want to cut between two different focal lengths or distances from the subject so that from clip one and clip two, you have two different perspectives. If you fail to do one or both of these things when cutting between two clips of the same subject matter, then you'll likely produce what is called a jump cut, which is cut number two. A jump cut when used unintentionally usually comes across as unprofessional and or lazy. It makes it look like you didn't get enough angles of the scene you were shooting or that you weren't willing to spend enough time in the editing room to find a better clip to cut to. Now there are times that jump cuts are used creatively and purposefully, for example, to show the passing of time or to show urgency or to make a long sequence go by faster. For example, in a recent commercial edit that I did, I had a subject walking into a building that was about a 10 second clip, but I only had five seconds to show it in the video. So to show the viewer that he walked across the whole room, I could either speed up the whole clip or do a jump cut. So I cut up the clip several times so that I could more quickly get to the point. Notice though that I did a digital zoom on the second and fourth clip so as to make the jump cut appear less jumpy and giving the illusion that they were shot in different focal lengths, helping sell the cuts as having been shot from two different cameras. Another tip on creatively using jump cuts is to put your camera on a tripod like you're seeing right now so that only the subject is moving between jumps and not the rest of the background. I have a lot of jump cuts in these talking heads because I make a lot of mistakes and I cut between breaths or long pauses so that you can more quickly consume my content. But these jump cuts don't look as jarring because only I am jumping while the background stays the same. But even with consistent unchanging backgrounds, I don't love showing jump cuts so I'll often try and cover up my jump cuts with some B-roll that goes over top of this A-roll. Or if I don't have any B-roll to put on top of what I'm saying, sometimes I'll just digitally punch in so that the audience can't tell that I made a cut there. It just looks like I cut to a different camera angle. So personally, I'm not a huge fan of the jump cuts, but some creators like to creatively use them. Just be careful with this one. If you're not trying to show the passing of time, it can come across as unintentional, jarring, and unprofessional. We'll cut this out so there's a jump cut. Moving on to cut number three is the L cut. L backwards. That's an L. The L cut. This is the same thing as a clean cut visually, but the difference is in the audio. An L cut means the audio from clip one carries over into clip two, making it into the shape of an L. This is most commonly used in dialogue scenes when you have two people talking to each other, and while one is still talking, you cut to the other to show their reaction of them listening before they actually start responding and talking themselves. I'm sorry, this is random, but we reviewed your application, and it was very weird. And unfortunately, you did not get the job. Open and stop looking at the camera. Goodness gracious. Sorry. Moving on to cut number four is the J cut. The Sorry. Honestly. Does everybody understood an L cut? 
how to do that? What's a good way to use an L cut? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Or you see the visuals, making the shape of a J. The purpose of the J cut is to lead your audience into the next clip, making the edit feel more seamless so that clips that otherwise wouldn't flow very well together seem to flow better because of the audio. This is typically used when you're transitioning between two completely different scenes where the visuals are very different. So to keep the cut from seeming abrupt, the audio helps ease the viewer into a change of scene. Which okay, so. This is commonly used in news stories, and you might want to write that down. This is the J cut is, let me write this down. I'm writing this down. So this is more commonly used in, uh, they're using it in, in, a, a, in a narrative film, but also it's commonly used in news stories, documentary type things, because um, the audio leads you into the next scene. So it's a, it's so it, that the scene's not odd, abruptly boom, changed. Um, it's it's a softer transition. So this is an important thing to know for your quiz. Okay, thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. This. When I'm sound mixing a video, I'm constantly using L and J cuts so that all the audio seems to blend together throughout the video, making it feel like one cohesive story. But moving on now to cut number five is let's go back. I like how I like how he demoed this. All right, wait. Okay, so they're showing you. Wait a minute. How far did we go? Okay. See it? I mean, this is kind of really nice. How, do you, can you see how he's doing those transitions right here? He's got the, you know, he's got, he's transitioning one scene into the next. Wish I could play it. So here's an L cut and then you've got the J cut coming in. So it's a way to transition from idea to idea to idea. Um, like say if somebody's going to be standing in the rain in the shot before that, maybe they're I don't know. Maybe they're they're at their mom's house talking, and then it's you hear like maybe she's pouring, he's washing dishes in the sink. But maybe you that water you think is the dishes in the sink, but the next scene cut is him walking in the rain. You, that's a good example of that. Does that make sense? You getting that? Any questions? No. So that all the audio seems to blend together throughout the video, making it feel like one cohesive story. But moving on now to cut number five is cutting on action. This is probably my favorite cut and one that if understood and applied can take an average looking edit and make it look much more seamless and much more professional. When I'm editing and choosing where to cut on a given clip, I'm always looking for motion or action of my subject. This can be something as simple as the turning of a head or someone standing up, but is more noticeably used on impact scenes like punches or someone running past camera or slamming a door or a splash jumping in the water. An example of the time that I often use it is every time at the end of one of my videos, I punch the screen and I always cut as my arm fully extends the punch. If I cut right before the punch or right after the punch, you notice that the cut doesn't look as seamless as when I cut right on the peak of that action. Effectively cutting on action can sometimes be a matter of just a frame or two. So I'm constantly looking for action to cut off of in my clips and I'm often very nitpicky testing out several different frames of a clip until I find the best part of that action to cut off of that most seamlessly transitions into the next clip. Moving on to cut number six is cross cutting or parallel editing. This is when you cut between two pieces of similar action or intercut between two locations. It's often used to establish relationship between two characters or locations and often suggests that the two scenes are happening simultaneously and helps create an emotion of suspense, anxiety, anticipation, or intensity. <laughs> Which, I mean, brings me to this. Hmm. Cross-cutting. Ever since we met a few days ago, <laughs> I thought you were so cool. Didn't that look, doesn't that look more like a flashback? It does. I, that I mean that to me, I didn't think about that as cross cutting, but so they flashing back. Will you? Oh, you're me. You're me. And a 
climax of a crosscut scene will usually end with both characters confronting each other in the same location, confirming that it was happening simultaneously. Moving on now to cut number seven is the cutaway. What does this button do? This means cutting to an insert shot of something different than the main piece of action and then back again. This is usually used as a plan B when the editor doesn't have enough good clips at his disposal or is trying to cover up a mistake so that his edit can cut seamlessly from clip to clip in the scene. So instead of using a jarring jump cut, he cuts to something else and then back again to split up that jump cut. Or that What's the difference between a cutaway and a jump cut? Just kind of thinking about that. Nobody knows. <laughs> okay. a mistake. Again, I do this all the time in my tutorials to hide any jump cuts or mistakes. You have the main action talking to the camera right now. This is A roll. And then to hide a jump cut or mistake, I'll cut away to some B roll. Okay, there's his point. So if you don't, that's one of the reasons why you should have a ton of B roll, more than you need. Because sometimes you may not have enough, like you, you did, you jump like that. And if you could put like a lot of B-roll in there, it'll cover up mistakes. So that's a point. Everybody got that thumbs up? That's gonna be on your quiz. Yep, okay. Play crickets. Yes. Okay, asking Spotify to play crickets. <laughs> Here we go. To cut away all the time. They'll be reporting on a location, then they'll cut away to B roll of things that they're talking about, and then cut back to their face talking again. And moving on now to cut number eight is the match cut. This is another one of my favorites. Match cuts are often incorrectly referred to as jump cuts. They can seem jumpy, but a match cut is when you cut between two shots that share similar action or framing. So you'll either match the cut to a piece. So are, what about, okay, so I'm going to ask another question, engage you. You know, TikTok videos, you know that one video where they're dressed up real frumpy and then they then they throw their shoe in the air and then they're dressed up real hot? Is it, What kind of shot is that? Jump cut. Yeah, jump cut. I don't know. I think you could also call it a match shot too because watch this. They're going to tell you a match shot because they have to be in the same position when they jump they jump into it. Jump cuts, they can seem jumpy, but it's a jump cut, cut but when you cut between two shots that share similar action or framing. So you either match the cut to a piece of action, like someone jumping into one location and then doing the exact same jump in a new location and then match cutting them together. I also recently put together a compilation of testimonials. Yeah, did you catch that? Testimonials the match shot? And I asked everyone who was sending. Did you catch what the match shot is? So like if I get, if I get McKenzie, like, like at her house and she jumps and then I get her when she's at school and she jumps in the same shot. And, and then I get her again, maybe walking in my house or something or jump. That's, you know, in, the, in a different location, she does the same action. One in to use the exact same framing so that we can match cut between them. Another great example of the match cut is the typical running across the frame as the background changes. Moving on now to cut number nine is the smash cut. A smash cut is basically when you go from something intense to something calm, or from something calm to something intense. A typical example of this is when a character is having a loud, intense dream, and right as the dream hits the climax of the action, the character shoots out of bed in his quiet room. For the opposite effect, sometimes you'll see a calm scene that suddenly cuts to a loud car passing by the engine. Smash cuts are a great way to keep your audience on their toes by dramatically shifting the intensity of your video or film. Next up is cut number 10. This is an old school classic, the fade in, fade out, or crop fade. The most uh, typical time you'll see this used is to start or end a scene. It's just a softer way than a clean cut to transition in or out of the scene. Okay, should you use that a lot? Like a lot of fades like that, cross fades like that? Is that, is that a, should you use it a whole lot in your work? Or? How much should no. you do? Okay. This say is no because opinion. yeah, yeah, agree. My opinion is is that if you use it too much, it takes you out of the story. And you know, and I tell the story of my, my colleague who used it a whole lot in news stories, and you it would just jar me out of the whole story when he just should could have just done a straight cut and a clean cut. 
And, you know, because it makes it, and, 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 and you don't need it to be that long either. Like you make it really long, like you would make it like 10 seconds. And then, and then you would be like seeing the same image and you're trying to figure out what's going to happen next. And you have 10 seconds of this crossfade thing. And the crossfade or dissolve is used to softly transition between two clips. The time that I most commonly see this used is in a slower paced nature video or mm -hmm. a slow paced music video, or it can be used to show passing of time or passing into a different world. Like if someone's daydreaming, you can crossfade into their dream world. I will say yeah. that one. Or something kind of artsy, you know, it's a more softy artsy type of reason that you use it. If you use it, you should have a good reason for using it and be able to justify why you used it. Okay. One of the biggest rookie mistakes I see beginning editors make is they overuse the crossfade. I yes. used it a ton when I first started because I hadn't yet learned any of these other tips on how to make my clean cuts look more seamless. Point I just couldn't taken. figure out how to make the clean cut transition well, so I just throw in a crossfade. And so that's why I'm having you do a paper ed edit because I want you to be really clear between your shots, like shot for shot, where you're going to go because then you're gonna be able to do a clean cut. And when you shoot, make sure, like again, I, I said it once, but I won't say it again, is make sure you shoot, have more than enough shot because that way you, you're able to slice it through like butter. If you don't shoot enough, it's just, it just stresses, it's just stressful to edit. Really the only times I use crossfade now is when I can't find a good way to cut between two clips. So I'll just fade them in together as a last resort. So personally, I think this is kind of a lazy man's way of editing. So careful not to use too many crossfades unless you are intentionally using them for a specific reason and not just because it's easy and lazy. Some other old school transitions like the crossfade are the iris, like what you'd see in I Shot My Eye Out, or the wipe, like mm -hmm. what you'd see in Star Wars. Old school transitions like this would look a little bit outdated if you use them today. So probably only best use if you're trying to make your edit look old school or if you just are trying to make some kind of silly edit. Now next up. So and do you remember do you remember the other day we were talking about those type of edits and I showed you those? Crickets, crickets. So um, those edits tend to look a little more amateur. It looks something like somebody would do like a PowerPoint show or a, um, looks like a Looney Tune cartoon, you know, the old cartoons. Everybody okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For cuts number 11 and 12, I want to touch on two of the more modern seamless transitions, but these two are, in my opinion, the least cliche and are still widely used in Hollywood films as long as they are used properly and sparingly. So cut number 11 is the camera movement cut. Essentially, it's a match cut, but using similar camera movements from clip A to clip B and matching them together in post. So if clip A has a whip pan to the right at the end of the clip, then clip B would start out the clip with the whip pan to the right. Then you'd cut them together and the motion blur between the two clips would create a seamless camera movement nice. cut. Now there's many variations of movements you could do to transition between scenes, like a rise up or down transition and using the ground or a second level, or a mix between the two of those for that falling out and into frame transition. These camera movement cuts are some of the funnest and trendiest cuts to do, but don't get carried away with them. Here and there they can spice up an edit, but if you use it on every single cut, it becomes expected and it loses its flavor. And now for our last and final cut number 12 is the invisible cut. This is another type of cut that we could categorize as a trendy seamless transition and is similar to and oftentimes related to the camera movement cut, but it usually utilizes an all white or an all black frame or a lot of motion blur from something passing in front of the camera in the foreground, thus hiding the cut to make it appear like there was no cut ever made. The invisible cut was used 34 times in the film 1917, but many people who've seen that film might think that the whole movie was shot on one long take. But if you watch closely, you'll notice that most of the cuts were made when either something crossed in front of the camera in the foreground or a cut to black in dark moments. Again, this is another one that can look really cool. Just don't overdo it. Use it to spice up the edit, but don't use it for every cut. So there you have it, guys. Those are 12 cuts and transitions that you can use to improve your edits and make them look more seamless and more professional. Obviously, there's more out there. Those are just the ones I would call the most widely used. My biggest advice, though, is don't be lazy throwing on presets and crossfades or just using one of these over and over. Take the time while you're shooting to think ahead of transitions that you want to do and shoot them in camera or take the time in the editing room to find which clips to cut together best and don't just throw Okay, did you catch the last sentence he put in there? What what are what's the best thing to do? Practice? 
you say don't just throw it in there. Exactly. You're supposed to plan plan your edit like right now like as you're thinking about how to do your shoot you need to be visualizing in your mind how you're going to put your film together what's the look going to be you know make sure you shoot enough footage um is is this is this is this helping is this kind of helping you think about your next i'm hoping this is helping you think about your next film your next project um, comments and questions are welcome. No, it was pretty helpful though. Okay. I would like it if you would take and check out this out again. This, I think this video is excellent and just kind of think about which, which one can you use? What, what could you incorporate in your film? What, what, what kind of cuts and transitions do you think, um, that you might might be helpful and make it in your film. I mean, you're definitely going to make some straight cuts. Um, maybe use some L cuts. I'm going to have a few jump cuts, but not any. Jump cuts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let's say you have two different people interviewed and you put them together in the edit and it, it looks abrupt when you boom, boom from the one person. But if you lay over some B roll over it and you do like a, a, a like a J cut on it that comes where the audio comes in, what's the difference? A J cut does what? Joshua. Isn't that when the audio from the last um uh, is heard in the first uh yeah you're mm -hmm. two together and your l cut is when you're you're hearing your audio come in before you see the person and an l cuts the opposite joshua are, is your hand raised okay yeah my, my hand was raised from earlier from a statement okay early all right do you have any comments or questions? No, ma'am, not at the moment. Okay. Um, let's see. So, let's see. All right. All right. So, any more questions, or I'm going to move on to the next thing? No, not right now. Okay. So, let's talk about um, if you haven't turned in your concept yet. Does everybody understand the assignment, though, what you need to do in the interview and the transcribing? Is everybody really crystal clear? Feel free to ask questions because I want, I want you to be successful with this. Um, I came in a little bit after, like when you were in the middle of discussing, but uh, I pretty much got the last part, like um, when you were showing the boxes where you're supposed to... Um, put notes in one and then uh show your footage on one right that's mm -hmm. what okay but the first part i missed the first part okay can someone um explain to her what about the interviews and transcribing well when you transcribe you're just um basically writing down what you're gonna hear what to say um okay. yeah just right now, what you hear from your interviews and taking out um, key things that you can use for your video. So you're going to highlight them. So you're going, when you do your interviews, you're going to do two, three, four interviews, and then you're going to put them into your editing and you're going to write out word for word, type what they said. And then the first step of that assignment though, is you're going to actually write a narration. Like you are going to be the narrator of your story. And you're going to tell the story and you're going to write it all out and then you're going to do a voiceover and then you're going to write all the narrative you know down take your interviews and write them type them out and then you're going to highlight the sound bites that you're going to use the parts of it that you're going to use the interview right you don't use an entire interview right jada okay yes right and so uh and so you're going to basically do a paper edit before you edit like you're gonna take everything together and you write them all down and then this script has your visuals your audios and notes and if you look at it it's just going to show you 
uh, what you're going to make a script and before you edit. So it's a paper called a paper edit. Does that make sense? Wait, all right, hold yeah, on. it makes sense, but oh, go ahead. Oh, my, no, you good. Go ahead. Okay, I was saying that it makes sense. So basically, we will have to have um, some footage already of our interviews before we uh, transcribe them to the paper, right? Exactly. You got to go do all your interviews and then you transcribe them. Okay. And then, and then you're going to write, you're going to do a voiceover for your story and write it all down, your voiceover. And then, and then from your voiceover, then you're going to figure out where your interview goes in. So you're going to put everything together before you edit. And then you're going to put everything in columns. So you, there's an example on, uh, was it module 12? <laughs> and you can use that as an example. So one column is going to be your visual, one column is going to be audio, and the other column is going to be your notes. Okay. And you have, next week is election day on Tuesdays, so we're not going to class that day. So you've got plenty of time to work on that. And then the next week, you got all the week to edit. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and then Tuesday, um, go out and vote, take a picture of yourself voting and, um, and post it in the discussion board there and you get a hundred points, extra credit. Fair enough. Is everybody voting? I voted already. I voted. Yeah. Already. Absentee. Yay. Anybody else? It's important to vote. No, we are voting. We definitely need to. We don't have much of a choice. I didn't hear you. Say what? And we don't really have much of a choice. We all have to vote. Yes, yes, yeah. Anthony, are you voting? Did you vote? I already did. Yeah. Okay. You put a picture and post that so you get credit. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Jamie, you're voting. How are you doing today? Oh, he gets crickets. What sound do crickets make? <laughs> Here's a cricket. <laughs> Jamie got crickets. Do you want to hear another animal sound? No, it's okay. All right, so um, so I'm winding down right now. We're down to the last few minutes here. So any other questions? I want this to be the best, the best video you've ever made. Um, and I, and this is something that's. Well, this script is is actually from Laura Seltzer's film, Last uh, Nobody Wants Us. So this is actually real world, real world when you make a film and how it's done in real world. Um, any other questions or I'm going to go ahead and start winding down the class. No. Okay. Does everybody? I have, oh, I have a um, question. Uh -huh. the, um, the part about so the trans the transcribe part. Do you have like an is it an an example of like an actual one? Cause like I don't I'm confused on like like so like we just gotta write out everything that we say in the the interview and then what we gotta do from there. So you're gonna be have a whole written transcription of your interview. Then you're gonna go and highlight the parts that you're gonna use out of that interview. And then you're going to write it. Let me go back and do it again. Okay, let me go back and do this. Hold on, let me go back and share. Okay, can you see the script in uh, the script that I have right here? I can't hear you. Can you see it? Um, screen? All I see is a uh, is a uh, um your uh main screen. Yo, okay. that's hold on. All right, hold on. Here we go. All right. So the first step is that you're going to go out and shoot all your B roll and all your footage. You're going to shoot pretty much everything have it planned what you're going to shoot right 
then you're going to put it all, I would put it all into your editing software, Adobe Final Cut. That's the first step. Go to each of your interviews and type out what everything that's said on your interview. Type it all out. Type out your voiceover, what you're going to say, your narrative. You're going to narrate your, your actual story. So type all that out. Then, and then go over your B-roll. Pick out what your better B-roll is. Do you know how to mark your, your footage, like in, 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 in edit? Like you can put little mark clips, you can color it, so you can color it like red, what you're going to use. Do you know how to do that? Yeah. Mark your footage. Does everybody know how to mark their footage and, and edit? I don't. You can show us. Yeah, I could show you. So let me. Miss Kat, are you? Ma'am. Are you referring to the like mark in and mark out? Yeah, you could do that. Mark in, mark out. But also, there's a place where if you um, right click it, it'll let you color the footage, like make it like red or purple or something. I can I can demo that for you if you want. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. So you should be able to see a script right now, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to go into your interviews that you did, and you're going to go in and you're going to highlight the place, you know, because you can't do a whole interview in in, a, in your film. It's going to come off like rambling, right? So you're going to go in. You're going to highlight the parts that you're going to use. Boom, boom. We, this, they do that in news stories. They do it in documentaries. On your script, this is the format you're going to use. You're going to put the title of your work, script. You're going to write the visual column, the audio column, and the notes column. So you're going to tell me, what am I going to see? What's the visual? So you might say the first shot you're going to do is an establishing shot. Okay, everybody following me? Okay, so here she's got some kind of archival footage. This might be a shot of your house, the establishing shot, the story. Tell me where we are, where the story is happening. Here, she took a quote about what somebody said. She's got a, the character of Annette, Annette, her voiceover. This might be you, this might be Mackenzie here. Her voiceover, she's starting to tell a story. And here's the notes. This is the archive that that's showing. This is the B-roll that's happening. So they might start out with her and then they might go to B-roll. So just make it clear so that I read it, I've got a good idea of what's going to happen in your film so that I could actually take it and say something, something happened where I could actually look at your script and I would know how to, ed and I could, looking at your script, I could go to your footage and edit it. Does that make sense? So doing this this way, this is the way it's done in, in the professional world. And it's a way to get everybody on board on your project that's working on your project. And so here we're starting off, it's showing you what the visuals are. <coughs> I'm not sure what these notes are here, but you, she's showing you the footage, you know, the, the projection, you know, she's showing you um, a 1930s Catholic church in the background. She's showing us what's going on. And then, and then she's got an audio. So we might, we have Simone on camera, which is somebody she's interviewing right here. She gives you the time code of where that is, because you do, if you write this, you want to be able to go back and find it. Or if I'm editing this for you, you want me to know where to find that footage so I can edit it for you. You get what I'm saying? And then the note here is you want to make sure there's a lower third here. Does that make sense? And you know, and I'm expecting to see lower thirds on your on your projects, on your videos. Okay, any questions? Am I am I answering the question correctly? Is I mean, is are you getting what I'm saying? So <clears throat> so like all right, I got you. Never mind. I got you. Do you understand why we're doing it this way? Why we're doing doing it with, it, with it's confusing. I don't know. I'm just I'm just confused about it. Like I don't know. I I got a question, but I don't know what my question is. I'm just confused. I don't know. Okay. So instead of jumping in and editing and, and just slapping it together. 
I want you to actually really visualize. I want you to be able to tell somebody else how to edit your project. I want you to have it figured out before you edit. So you're going to write, it's basically you're going to, you're going to write the voiceover, the narrative story. That's step one. Okay. Step two, take all your interviews that you shot and transcribe them. And then you're going to tell me shot for shot what's going to happen in, in, in your video. My fault. I'm I'm uh driving. So all right, so okay. You said we gotta give a narr a narration. Yeah. How, so how are we supposed to know what the interview people are gonna say? I'm supposed to give a narr so I'm supposed to already know what they're gonna say? Nope. Nope, but you know, you may wanna go interview people first. That might be your first step. You might wanna just go interview people. You kind of know what the story is, so then tell the story. You could do it that way. It doesn't matter. I mean, and then transcribe it. Oh, all right. I got you. So then you could then write out a script, like I'm showing you, like da 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 da, what happens in each shot, in each scene, what's going on. And then you could, you don't have to write out, just take out the sound bite of what you're going to do. Like when you put in your script, it could be a time code zero, one, two, three. And then, and then you put like the beginning of it. And then you could put it in ending at zero, zero, one, four, two, right? Does that make sense? And then show me what you're, tell me what the, if you got lower thirds, what the lower thirds are going to say and, and, and so forth. Did I answer that okay uh, to your to what, what you need? Yes, ma'am. I, I got you. Okay. All right. Email me. Let me know if you have any questions or you have any any trip ups on this, and I'll 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 be here to help you on it. Okay. All right. Does anybody foresee any challenges on doing this part of the project? I may run into some, some hiccups, but we'll discuss that at a later date. Okay. Yeah, we need to meet up, okay? All right. Um, yeah, we need to meet up. Um, we'll talk later, though. Um, when are you mostly available? Send me, would you just send me an email of your availability? I got you. Okay. Uh, Josh was like, boom. All right. Well, let, we're going to wrap this up. Any more questions? I want to make sure I have everybody, uh, everybody's making sure they're really clear on what to do. And if you're not, email me and we'll meet up and we'll talk about it. Okay. Thumbs up. Okay. Talisha, you're going to hang out for a little bit? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, guys. Um, if you don't have any more questions at class for today, let me know. Hello. Yeah, Miss Kat, what you were saying? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I just I got dropped from the meeting. Somebody had called me. I missed it, hit the wrong button. What you were saying? Oops. Um, send me an email. Let me know your availability. Let's, let's do a little meeting. Um, All right. Okay. Because I, I had a talk with um, Dr. Mims yesterday. I'm a little concerned about you. I, All right. I told him you're awesome. He knows you're awesome too. So, <laughs> but we we just want to make sure you're 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 a senior this year. We want to make sure you're you're gonna you know you're okay. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Okay. Email me right now and just send, tell me your availability and then um, I'll meet up with you and we'll, we'll sort some things out. All right. That'll work. Cool. Appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Jada, you good? Okay. Um, I just wanted to say this before I go. Um, that assignment, that Laura Seltzer uh, assignment, I still, when I looked on Blackboard for the YouTube video, mm -hmm. it wasn't there. So um, you gotta go on to the click on to the uh, in it. Don't just click on it in Blackboard. Don't try to go to YouTube and watch it. 
Yeah, that's what I tried to do, but um, it doesn't even, it just says uh, YouTube took it down. I know it did. All right, hold on. Um, let's see. Um, that's the only, um, pretty much that's the only assignment that I'm kind of behind on. I got you. Well, maybe I'm, let me see if I can get this. Maybe I shouldn't be grading that. Let's see, was it this one? I also remember like when you showed us during class, it'll work for you, but on, on our end, it's not, it's not working. Oh, oh really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I may have to take that down then if that's the case. Okay. Hold okay. on. Share screen. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. So I think, and then I think, wait a minute, let me check. So I think if you go, copy. All right, yeah, YouTube did some work. Okay, well, she's here, here. I don't know. I'm trying it right now myself. All right, let me, let me, it was, it's, that's up there. All right, let me give you the, um, the link. Will that help? That'll help. Okay, let me give you a link in chat. Okay. Can you see it? Yes, ma'am, I got it. Hold on. Uh, try it and tell me what you what you get on your end so I know about it. Tamiria, how you doing? I'm doing good. I have to talk to you about like this whole um Zoom issue that I'm having. Cause I was trying to join your class, but I ended up joining like late. Um I'm not sure if you're done talking with Jada, so. Um, it, just, it just says video unavailable when I click the link. It did? Uh-huh. All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cancel that assignment. I'm really sorry that happened. That's just not worth. I don't want people stressing out over that. Well, thank you, because that's what I was stressing out about, but thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right, I'll cancel that out. Yeah, all right. Y'all have a good rest of the day. I'm about to log off. I'm applauding you. You too. Okay. All right. Bye bye. All right. All right. So, uh, Tamiri, what's what's up? So I have I don't know what the issue is, but I've had this problem with Zoom to where it tells me that um I have a security issue in like I guess the application and it won't let me like join it'll have me it'll say like trust or don't trust and of course i press trust because when the little pop-up window comes up i mean i press don't trust because when the pop-up window oh, you comes hit up don't trust you should put trust just just let it go talisha hang in there give me a second but it's and no because it's telling me something about a security issue as in like a like something with like hacking or something like that it has like a whole like descriptive on it so when i put don't trust it won't let me join to like 30 minutes to like 40 minutes to after i've tried my first attempt to join the meeting oh that's so I'm just crazy like, do you have the app on your on your desk on your computer or do you are you just putting in the link um i have it on my computer what i'm doing is when they all send like a link i'll just like copy and paste it into the actual zoom application on my laptop but sometimes if the teacher has the link and it's a clickable link mm -hmm. I'll press it and it'll take me to my browser and then it'll open up the application so I think it just depends on how I do it because it doesn't happen every time but it does happen and I'm just like because I have to like wait until I guess the server or the security issue disappears and then it'll automatically allow me to enter zoom again and I don't know why I have that trouble but it happened today